Hello everyone, welcome again to the Philip Sadiq Show, special Shanghai calling. And like they say, Shanghai is like a beautiful woman, right? Yes, yeah, Shanghai is like a beautiful woman. It's a saying that they have in, uh, in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel Shaw, the director, writer too. So how's it going? It's, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. You won so many awards with this film. I mean, what was it about filmmaking that drew you to it? Plus you have Bay Area roots, right? I, uh, I have some roots in the Bay Area. I uh, went to Stanford, uh, graduated class of 01, so I have a lot of friends up here in the Bay Area. Uh, I also have a lot of friends who went to Cal, uh, just because I've, you know, being from, being from California. Yeah, but still, being from California, I, have, I went to high school in Orange County. You know, a lot of people go to, uh, go to schools within California, so I have a lot of, I'm very familiar with the San Francisco area. Okay, fantastic. How'd you get into filmmaking? Um, ever since I was a kid, I was always very interested in stories. I loved watching movies and reading books, and uh, I would write a lot of stories myself and uh, draw draw like three panel comic strips. And when I was uh, in high school and college, I started studying you know fiction writing and was doing that for a little while. But then I, you know um, after I graduated, I kind of had trouble figuring out what I wanted to do. Like most you know Chinese American kids, my parents wanted me me to be a doctor, uh, and uh, and I almost I almost like took the med cat, uh, the MCATs and all that stuff but um, in the end I decided that I, I was tending I was tending bar uh, at MacArthur Park a restaurant of all places and trying to figure out what I wanted to do and then I applied to USC film school and so I studied production there for about a year and then realized that even though I'd learned a lot of stuff uh, uh, you know it was it was okay for me to go out and find uh, find work and started working you know as what we call a production assistant with that's a PA um, you know fetching coffee making copies Earning your dues. Earning, yeah, yes, exactly. Paying my dues, earning, earning, earning my my stripes, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, getting to know writers and producers, and uh, they would take an interest in me and ask me what I wanted to do, and I told them, you know, I, w I really want to write for for television and for the screen, and they helped me find, you know, my first agent and uh, find wow. a job working in TV, and I, I wrote for TV for about five years before I uh, started doing this movie. Now, what was it about this particular subject in the film? Because it's a wonderful film. I mean, I laugh like crazy. Oh, Some of the parts will get you in the heart, too. So what was it about this story? Um, so about five years ago, I started noticing that I read a lot of news. I started re noticing that the websites like New York Times would have a China-related story on the front page every single day, you know, whether it was uh, U.S.-China relations economically or politically or militarily. Um, and around that same time, a very good friend of mine, his name's Vance, he's from Atlanta. He lives here in San Francisco. Uh, he, um, he decided that he was going to move to Beijing. And he didn't speak a word of Chinese and had never lived outside of the United States. And uh, every time I ran into him, like at a wedding or something like that, uh, whenever he would come back, he would tell me these hilarious stories about what it's like to be an American living as an immigrant in somebody else's country. And it's, and it's not something you think about because the, the, the paradigm here in the United States is the, uh, the United States is a, a nation of immigrants. You know, every, people come from everywhere to uh, find jobs and settle down and you know, uh, have a family here in the United States. But these days, countries like China, well, let's put it in, this, in, in, uh, in countries particularly like China, uh, are are growing like crazy and booming. yeah booming you always see stories about oh the economy of china is going to be the number one in the world every single american corporation if they're not in china right now they want to be there they want to be selling products there but in order to do that they have to open offices there and send people there and so if you go to a city like shanghai which is the trade capital of china you will see no shortage of americans of all you know uh colors and all races and all religions who are living there and um learning chinese and having you know having uh sometimes a difficult time but sometimes just really crazy and hilarious experiences uh living there okay um directing your style of directing i mean we see mr henny as i mean a comedian we've never seen him in that role what did you do to paint that picture for him um you're absolutely right. We've never seen Daniel Henney be as funny and charming in this movie as, I, at least as I've seen him. Because I mean, like my first, the first time I saw him was probably in uh, X Men Origins Wolverine, where he played Agent Zero, and uh, and he never cracks a smile, you know. But he's so handsome, right? So we knew we we knew, you know, you can't go wrong casting a very handsome actor in your movie. But uh, when it came to like the comedy scenes, um, I first I uh, first before we had a chance to work together, I wanted to rehearse with him a lot. And then when we started rehearsing. 
it was so clear that he knew the timing and he had it and he and it was something he could do but you know i guess the downside of being such a handsome actor is that mo for the most part the studios will cast you in that handsome guy role rather than the funny guy role right. uh but at the same time a handsome face is great for comedy because you know when you to see the handsome arrogant guy fall on his face is really funny he does. Yes, exactly. More than a couple of times. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. He always gets himself into situations that uh, he should understand better, but he doesn't. Right. Now, how did you, as a director, the chemistry between him and um, Eliza, I think her name? Yeah, Eliza Coop. Yeah, how did you guys, how did you paint that? How did you get that going? Because it's you could see in the, some of the scenes, it's like, is he going to kiss her? Is he not? You can see the tension building. Right. Is he not? And then he just like... Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, so Daniel and uh, Eliza Coop. Eliza Coop, of course, from TV's Happy Endings, one of the one of the funniest shows on TV. Um, they uh, they had actually never met before ar arriving in Shanghai. Is that right? Yeah, because uh, you know, doing a small independent movie, things are always up in the air, and we didn't. We had to. Jan my producer Janet Yang and I had to immediately get to Shanghai one day, and we didn't have a chance to you know lock up the the the, the female lead. But um, uh, as soon as they met, uh, we had dinner, uh, four of us, me and Janet Yang, the producer, and Daniel Haney and Eliza Coop, and we had sat down for a dinner, and they just hit it off. And they had a very similar sense of humor, and uh, were joking around. And when we were rehearsing, they were playing off of each other really well. And it's one of those things that you can never count on, you know, getting finding chemistry between your two leads, because if they really do like each other, then it's easy for them to play two different things, one, two different types, of, two different beats, one of which is we do like each other, and one of which is we don't like each other because you know you can just you can just feel out that energy, mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, I think we we really lucked out with casting on this one. Yeah, you did. I have to say, man. I mean, I it, I was telling you know Sean, Sean. I says I have a brother who's in Japan. He's been there I think 25 years, okay. and he is I guess more quote Japanese now than American because when he speaks English, it's in the Japanese cadence, yeah. and he doesn't. We say you're speaking funny. He's a Oh yeah, yeah I am. So, but it's it's just you know it's I film is great, man. I'm serious. It is a fun film. Oh, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. And yes, we've definitely found that you know if you've traveled abroad or spent any time you know like in another country where you don't speak the language, this movie really hits home for you. But at the same time, if you've never been abroad and you've always wondered what Shanghai is like, then uh, you know you can consider the movie a, a, a your first trip to Shanghai. Yeah, I may even go to Shanghai, you guys. Yeah, you should like, totally go. I totally was wonderful. Daniel. Thank you, my friend. Hey, Thanks again.